Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge after being wronged. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, coworker sends me obscene messages. I gather evidence, other girls and am ready to go to battle. The second story, guy refused to pay money for repairs, so I used a secret function and the device stopped working. The third story, over 200 plus residents now have TV services included in their rent without any increase. This was my revenge for bad services. Today's first story is, coworker sends me inappropriate texts by work email. I gather evidence, other girls, and am ready to go to fight. One of my coworkers who I had thought was friendly, but that was it, he is married, sent me some inappropriate texts at like 3 a.m. on St. Patrick's Day weekend asking me to come over and have some fun, and saying that he had been into me for a while and knew I felt the same. I don't. He's also sent me a naked selfie that luckily, cut, but dang it was close. When I saw them I was out with friends and I was like, what the F? Okay, this is a Monday problem. I have a really strict rule with myself that I don't do work, think about work, or answer messages about work, outside of 9 to 5 Monday through Friday. I also don't use my personal phone for work stuff. If someone from work calls or texts and it's not one of the coworkers I see as a close friend and trust to not talk shop on the weekends, I'm not answering. And I included dealing with this effort as a workday problem so I ignored his message. He sent me several later first saying sorry he was drunk, then saying he hadn't said it how he wanted but he was still into me and had a feeling I felt the same. On Monday I wrote him an email on the work email saying, Hi coworker, I'm writing to follow up on your messages from the prior several days. See attached. Please only contact me through work channels during regular business hours. I do not use my personal number with colleagues. Additionally, I found the content of your messages unwelcome and inappropriate. Please only contact me regarding work. OP. I didn't send the email to HR, but I did blind CC my personal email so I'd have a copy just in case. And he got really mad. He texted me back saying I had crossed a line attaching his picture to a work email. Was I trying to get him fired? I screenshot that text too and attached it to an additional email saying, As per my prior email, please only contact me about work matters, and only on my business email or Slack. He stopped texting me but he came to my desk to speak to me, and before he said anything I asked, Is this a work question? And he said I knew what it was about, and I said that I wasn't available for a discussion at the moment. If he did need to meet with me for a work matter, could he please schedule a meeting on the calendar and include a read ahead to brief me on the topic of the meeting? He walked off. I feel like I was a bit of a B in dealing with it when maybe I could have told him to cut it out by text, but I'm also effing sick of dealing with this SH at every job, and I feel like my patience to use my own time and energy to gently ask guys to cool it is worn thin, and I want to set the precedent that I won't engage at all, outside of work hours or work accounts. I was thinking I'd wait to see if he would chill, but honestly with him coming by to bother me in person that's not a bad idea. Edit. Looks like the overwhelming majority of y'all think I need to go to HR to get ahead of this. I was considering holding off to see if he cools it himself, but the way he came to my desk after being told off twice makes me think that's probably not the best idea. I'm gonna forward the emails to HR, write up the conversation we had at my desk, and ask them to meet with me to discuss. Edit 2. I sent an email to HR this afternoon, and they called a meeting with me the same day. I told them everything, though there wasn't a lot to say that wasn't already captured in the emails, and they assured me that I wouldn't have any more contact with them at work. They're going to meet with them tomorrow. It's still not decided if he will be fired or if he will be moved to a different position where he won't have any reason to speak to me. I have a feeling it might depend on how he handles the conversation with them. I do feel good about emailing HR. I feel like along with myself I've possibly helped out other women by starting that paper trail if it turns out to be something he's done more than once. Edit 3. Holy SH. I went out to happy hour with a few of my female friends in my field event and one of my friends told me she'd met this same guy at a professional conference given him her business card with her phone number and he sent her a nasty pic too. She just replied saying that that was inappropriate and she had a husband and he said something about her husband not having to know. So she had her husband call him and leave a voicemail telling him to F off and then she never heard from him again. I asked her if she'd be okay sending screenshots of the text exchange to my HR contact. She was and she even wrote that she met him at a professional conference when he was representing the company. She gave him a business card for networking reasons and he sent her an unsolicited lewd picture and that she needed her husband to intervene to stop the harassment. I haven't checked my email again. I'm trying to leave work at work and not dwell on this anymore tonight. But it seems like HR will have even more to go off before meeting with him. Edit 4. He was fired. I don't know a lot of details. 
I have a follow-up meeting with HR soon, but my coworkers told me he was escorted out of the building this morning. One of my coworkers who sits near the HR office said they heard him screaming at the HR staff during his meeting at this morning. It's crazy how stuff escalated, honestly. Just last week, I thought he was a chill guy. I'd been on the fence at first, but I feel like stuff was going to escalate either way, and I feel a lot safer not having to see him every day at work. I wonder how many women had to deal with this a-hole over the years. I just shudder. The next story is... Don't mess with an engineer. I work for a company that provides specialized equipment used in manufacturing. To protect my anonymity, I'll have to be vague about what exactly this machine does. During my time working in this field, I got to know many clients who would need these machines installed and serviced. One of these customers we'll call Jake. I later left the company for a different job, but Jake apparently kept my number. One afternoon, I got a call from Jake that they wanted a new unit installed, and another unit needed maintenance, and wanted to know if I was available. I let him know that I left the company, but that I could pass him on to someone who could help. He tells me he'll pay two times my current rate to install the unit over the weekend. He lets me know that the company has increased the rates for installation, and the company just can't afford it. The instructions they sent over just aren't clear enough and their engineers are scratching their heads trying to figure it out. He begs me to consider it and I agree. For more context, installing this unit can take a good few hours, or up to a day on your own. The company gives you two options. You can either pay for an engineer to come and install it, or you can save money and they will send instructions so the customer's own engineers can install it. The instructions aren't easy to follow and it's company policy that if someone has started to install the equipment, the supplier wouldn't get involved since they couldn't verify that any of the pieces were broken. This will be important later. I drive down on the weekend and they show me the boxes of equipment. I set to work and I make good progress installing the unit. Around six hours in and I'm stopped by Jake who greets me. I let him know I'm nearly finished and he tells me, sorry but they just don't have the budget to pay you. He understands my frustration, but his engineers can take it from here. To say I was frustrated was an understatement. I wanted revenge. There's a small button inside the unit that changes the unit into test mode. This is done to perform maintenance on the unit, but it's impossible to configure the unit with this button pressed. It's only possible to reach this button using a pin, so it's not easily pressed during installation. Because of this, the installation instructions don't mention it. There's no real way of telling the equipment is in test mode. It just won't work normally. I think you can guess where this is going. I click the button, collect my things and leave. Monday morning, I get a call from Jake. I declined. I knew my old company wouldn't get involved since I already started installing the unit. I knew his engineers would never figure it out. I just had to let him stew. A few days later with many missed calls, I finally pick up. Jake is furious. He asks me where the hell I've been and why I haven't been picking up the phone. He tells me that they can't figure out how to configure the machine and they need my help. I tell him, why is this my problem? You won't pay me. He told me he was sorry and they would work something out if I could get there as soon as possible. I told him, oh no, you're going to pay me 7,000 pounds up front before I do anything. I'd never felt this powerful before. He screamed at me for a bit and hung up. He called back a day later after saying he's sorry for how he acted and said that if I could come fix it he would pay me, in a totally defeated tone. He tried to fight it saying he'll pay when I was done but I was having none of it. After a bit of back and forth he agrees to pay me. The money hit my account and I came in the next day. The look of confusion over his face when I took out a pin and changed the unit from test mode was priceless. It was even more priceless seeing his reaction to me packing up my tools and leaving after only 20 minutes of configuring. Easiest 7,000 pounds I'd ever made. Don't try to mess with a professional problem solver. Edit. I would have kicked it up to 10,000 pounds after getting chewed out, but I was afraid they would find someone else if I asked for too much. Honestly, my biggest regret, but I think it's important not to be greedy. The last story is... Maintenance guy at Senior Living Center gets revenge on satellite TV companies. Over 200 plus residents emerge victorious. I'm the maintenance director at an independent senior living center. It's pretty much an apartment complex in which you have to be a senior citizen to reside. We provide three meals a day, housekeeping, activities, a bus for transportation, and several other amenities to increase the quality of life, because more times than not, they'll spend the final years of their life here. Our facility is family owned and orientated. Family members of current employees are encouraged to apply for positions. We have one rule in our employee handbook, ensure resident safety, happiness, and prolongment of life. I take my job very seriously and take pride in it. I try to go above and beyond to make them all happy. Each resident during the daytime either listens to the radio, play crossword puzzles, or most of the time watch their favorite TV shows. We do not provide television service. Each resident has to provide it themselves if they choose. Over the last year, there's been a trend of televisions not working in countless units, and when this happens, they're very upset. 
When I get a work order for a TV, I go and check it out. Most of the time, there's nothing I can do. If the cable isn't cut, everything is plugged in, and they are in no obstruction to the satellite signal, and it's going to be a software issue. When this happens, I install an air antenna until their regular service is fixed. I can the company and a tech comes out, fixes it, and usually within a couple of hours it stops working again. This is a never-ending cycle of upset residents. Over the course of an entire year, I spoke with several supervisors and tried to schedule for someone to come out and go through the entire property with me to address each issue. They weren't having that. They wanted me to go to each individual unit and have that particular resident call them. This is almost impossible. A lot of them have trouble hearing and discussing complex matters over the telephone, let alone know the four-digit code and the answer to the secret question. One resident was out of service for over 60 days, and I demanded that they refund or discount this particular resident properly. They ended up only giving her $21 off, which isn't even half of a single month's payment. I mean, come on, she's 92 years old, a firecracker, but nevertheless a bit aged. Every single time they ask her for the four-digit code, she never remembers it. This causes her to get all worked up like you wouldn't believe. She would even start to shake. This makes my blood boil. When I spoke with this particular representative, I told him that wasn't enough, and I would be throwing all their dishes in the dumpster. This is just the tip of the iceberg. These companies have caused significant property damage to the facility. They've ran the coax in the gutters and down the downspouts. Ran cables draped over the sidewalk, which is a tripping hazard. Installed dishes in the center of courtyards and wherever is convenient for them. All over the property, cables are strung out on top of the grass for hundreds of feet. They don't bother to bury any cables. I've discussed this numerous times with the owner of the facility for the last year. The last time I spoke with him about it, he gave me the okay to handle the situation and do whatever needed to be done to fix the issue. My options were limited, and the only feasible option I could concoct was using a landline company that didn't need a satellite dish. Well, I've officially finished running new coax to every single unit, and a landline company has came in and installed the boxes and services in each resident's apartment. Residents who have previously had to pay a monthly fee for their television service now get their service free of charge. Those that never had service now do. We've saved over 50 residents money every month, and all in total over 200 plus now have television service that's included in their rent without any increase whatsoever. This was revenge for the representative talking to Miss T in such a negative and rude tone. I couldn't be happier for my residents. Our senior citizens are some of the most precious things in life. They hold all of our wisdom. Good day. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button.